Number one, there is always an atmosphere that brings the presence of God. Listen, God is everywhere, but His manifest presence is not everywhere. This is why although God is in your house, you may not be healed yet. But if you get up and you come into a place, a meeting like this, then you find out that you are healed. Then you find out that you are delivered. The manifest presence of God. Hallelujah. Number one, you create the atmosphere of God's presence through the ministry of worship. Please never forget the ministry of worship. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with what? He said, come before him with singing. There's something about the Holy Spirit and songs. There's something about the Holy Spirit and music. Every man of God I know who moves powerfully in the spirit is a man of worship and a man of songs and a man of singing. Whether he knows music or not, the Holy Spirit does something to him. Come before him with singing. Let my life be the temple of your spirit. And let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell oh lord i want to know your glory i want to offer the sacrifice of Again. there's something about worship worship is like a magnet Paul and Silas prayed and when they prayed certain possibilities did not start happening but when they switched and they began to sing and worship the Bible says God himself came because he inhabits the praises of his people that means whenever you truly find praise and worship the presence of God finds expression there. Many of us need to cultivate the art of singing and worshiping in God's presence. There are so many powerful songs that you can select and create the atmosphere for His presence. Number two, the ministry of prayer. Creating the atmosphere for His presence. The ministry of prayer never underestimates the power of prayer the Bible says while they prayed together and fasted the Holy Ghost spoke to them it is a spoke to one person he spoke audibly to all of them and said, separate me Paul and Barnabas unto the ministry wherewith I have called them while they prayed and they fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Paul and Barnabas hallelujah the ministry of prayer is very very important very important you must learn to pray prayer is not just to solve problems or to solve satanic problems no you can just lock yourself and while worship is going on you're just blessing him thank you for your presence jehovah we praise you and you're just worshiping and all of a sudden that glory will mantle you in that place listen when the glory of god comes it does something even to your physical body are you getting my point oh yes your physical body can be affected by the glory of God 
your mind can be affected by the glory of God. Prayer. 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 You want to experience the presence of God. Number three. The atmosphere that can be created. Corporate fellowship. Corporate fellowship with the brethren. Corporate fellowship. Psalm 133. Behold how good and pleasant it is when men dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that runs upon the head of Aaron down to his bed, to his skirt. He said, for dear, God has commanded the blessing. The blessing is not money. The blessing is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must learn to create that atmosphere. Your job is to create that atmosphere. Once you create that atmosphere in worship, you create that atmosphere through prayer. You saturate yourself. And then you create that atmosphere by your perpetual study of the word. The Holy Spirit is called the revealer of the deep things of God. So whenever you take your Bible, you compel his presence because it means you are ready to understand the deep things of God. He said, and he opened up their understanding that they might understand scripture. Isaiah 11. Talking about the roots that will come out of the stem of Jesse. Talking about the sevenfold manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And the next verse says, as a result, you shall be of quick understanding. There's no point. The Holy Spirit trying to help you understand. When you are not passionate about the word. You must love the word. Hallelujah. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence, Lord. I love, I love, I love your true powerful song. I love, I love, I love your presence, I love, I love, I love you Jesus. This is how I get a lot of the messages that I teach. I don't sit down saying I'm trying to get a message. I'm just focusing, worshiping him and praying. And let me tell you something sometimes please add this one way of creating the presence of god is through silence many of you do not know that silence is a powerful spiritual principle he said be still and know that i am god there is a level of knowledge and impartation of divine things that come upon you when you are still sometimes you just need to go somewhere and be still just still you're not listening to anything the bible says and there was the wind and the voice was not in the wind and there was an earthquake and the voice was not in the earthquake and there was fire and the voice was not in the fire when there was silence the still small voice came could it be that some of us are too busy for intimacy sometimes you need to retreat and just go somewhere where you are not hearing any sound at all and then the voice of the lord will come to you god is not always speaking people say god is always speaking does it make sense you are not always speaking the bible says the word of the lord came the word of the lord came in the fifth day of the tenth month of this and that the word of the lord came the word comes the word comes 
God is not always speaking. He speaks. Hallelujah. Johnson Suleiman, a great man of God, was worshipping and praying. And a very prominent politician came to his house, wanting to see the man of God so he can inquire of the Lord a few things about his life and career. And for one hour, they kept him in the parlor. And the guy started feeling, I'm a dignified personality. I mean, let this man of God come and respond to me. And after two hours, at a point his wife was already embarrassed, apologizing, you know, and then his daughter also. After three hours, he had not come out. And the daughter went to knock and she entered and she told him, said, Daddy, how about this is not fair. This is a noble man. You should come out and respond to him. And Joseph Suleiman said, he looked at his daughter and he said, my daughter, sit down. He said, there is a reason this man is coming to my house. This secret place is the reason why he is coming. If I forfeit the secret place, just to go and talk to him a day will come the man will not return again let him wait how many times do we rush out of the presence of god in pursuit of what only his presence can give you there are many of us who get into all kinds of trouble you are in a straight betwixt to make a lot of decisions in your life you've heard the opinion of every other person could it be that you need some time to just stay with the spirit and say lord i've had every pastor and every man of god and every apostle and every prophet speak to me and you stay in his presence i'm telling you sometimes it takes a very long time before the presence of god comes there are times that i go to the secret place and i'm i'm praying and singing and worshiping and i wait and god doesn't say anything i fall asleep and i wake up nothing has happened and then if you can be patient enough he is the rewarder of them not that seek him that diligently and part of diligence is persistence it is they that wait upon the lord you know what it means to wait upon the lord this is what they are doing they've been standing here for a long time just hoping maybe i would need their help for something this is what it means to wait sometimes to wait doesn't mean to fast it means to enter the secret place and hallelujah you need to wait i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting on you lord i don't mind waiting i don't mind waiting I don't mind waiting. I will never trade anything for the treasure of the Holy Spirit that I have. Hallelujah. I will never trade anything for the treasure of the Spirit. The reason why all of you can sit down today to listen to me is because of His presence. Are you listening to me? The reason why people can say, ah, this is a man of God. Let us inquire of the Lord. is simply because of his presence. If I neglect his presence, I have neglected my destiny. You are the treasure that I seek. You are the, how do they sing it? Treasure that I seek. You are my heart. Mean this song from the depths of your heart seeking you as a precious jewel seeking you as a precious jewel not to give up i'll be you are my all in all stay with the holy ghost and let him make you a champion stay with the holy ghost and let him make you a sign and a wonder stay with the holy ghost and let him take you out of inferiority and complex you have been admiring people 
admire the spirit of the living God. And let me tell you, when you admire the spirit of the living God, something will happen to you. He will take you beyond this level. This is what he did. My life is a testimony that God can pick any man from any realm, no matter what the limitations are. If you will follow him in that flight, if you can stay and say, Lord, let, it, let every other thing go. Jacob told his wives, you can go. He told his cattle, go. He told everybody, leave. When he was alone, a man came and Jacob held him. He said, I've waited so long. You must change my name and change my story. And he said, you are Jacob, but your name will be called Israel. For as a prince, thou hast contended with God. This is the secret of true anointing. Stop chasing after men. I'm not teaching you not to honor men. But we honor apostles and prophets and we carry people as though we are worshipping them. Let me tell you the same access. The veil has been torn and everyone can come. It's just that the price is enormous and many people do not want to pay. We think everything in the kingdom is a gift. I bring you a deeper revelation. There are certain realms that are rewards. He said, let us therefore labor to enter that rest. It's not a gift. We'll soon be praying and God is going to be doing a mighty work in this place. Listen, for many of you, it's going to be like God has been seeking you. He's been, you know how a man is looking for a woman. For many of you, God has been calling your attention. The bush has been burning for years, but you have refused to see it because you are looking for money. The bush has been burning for years and as good as your academics is, it has distracted you from seeing that bush. Moses was tending his father-in-law's sheep Jethro. And he saw the burning bush. Only God knows how long the bush burned. God was trying to lure him into a place of intimacy. He's calling you deeper. 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 It's calling you deeper, 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 deeper. So we will go higher, 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 higher. It's calling us deeper. There is a deeper dimension beyond church, beyond Christianity. Deeper, deeper, it's calling us deeper.